Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will be discussing about the second problem of today's weekly contest. Take k of each character from left and right. The problem states that you are given a string s consisting of three characters a, b and c and a non-negative integer k. In each minute, you are performing one of the following operation. You will take either the leftmost character of s or you will take the rightmost character of s. So after performing like you will keep on performing this operation until you collect k number of a characters k number of b characters and k number of c characters right and you need to let's say at ith minute you are able to collect k number of a characters k number of b characters and k number of c characters so you have to find minimum such i at which you will be able to collect at least k number of each of these characters right and if it is not possible you have to return minus one right so let's just take an example let's say this is the string right and k is two it means that you need to collect two number of a characters two b characters and two c characters right so what they are saying is they will take three characters from the beginning and five characters from the end and if you now see uh, in the like in the last five characters, we already have two C's, right? And we have two A's already. Now we also want two B's. So there's one B already here. And they're saying that we take the first three characters. So in first three character, we can see there is one more B. So basically by collecting first three and the last five characters, we are able to collect two unit of each of these characters. So hence, this configuration like taking out first three and the last five is a valid configuration so at the end of eighth step at the end of eighth step eighth step we are saying that okay we are able to collect all the like at least k of all the characters right so you will try any other possible configuration and you will see you will not be able to come up with less than eight steps in which you will be able to collect two units of each of this character and hence the answer is it right so let's just take another example let's say s is a and k is one it means we have to collect one unit of each of these characters right so no matter what you do you will not be able to collect one a one b and one c because b and c are themselves not there so hence the answer is minus one we can't do anything like we can't uh, we can't keep on performing this operation like even if we keep on performing this operation and exhaust the entire string we will not be able to collect k number of a and a b and c right so hope the problem statement is clear now how to solve this so as always let's start with uh, uh, the brute force so what should come to your mind like uh, okay first of all i would encourage you to pause the video and think the brute force by yourself right so because that is the uh, bare minimum that you should be coming up with before solving any problem right so i would encourage you to pause the video and think about the brute force at least the brute force solution by yourself it might be anything order n square or anything like that right so okay so i assume you have uh, like thought about it so let's see so what we are doing we are saying that at one step either we can take the leftmost or we can take the rightmost right so what can happen at the end? Let's say you, you started with this, you take the leftmost, then you again take the left, leftmost, you again take the leftmost, then you take the rightmost, 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 right? And that's what, so at the end, after you perform all the operations, what you will be having? You will be having some prefix, right? Some prefix of this string and some suffix of this string, right? So that's what you will be having right and let's say you are taking up to l up to index l of the prefix and up to index r of the suffix so you can simply count the number of a's so in this case number of a is four then you will count the number of b's number of b in this case is two right and then you can count number of c's number of c here is one right so you can simply count a b and c and see if all of them are greater than equals to k or not if they are equals to k then this is a valid configuration so what do we mean by valid configuration we are saying that if we take three characters from here if we take four characters from here it is 
like it is a valid configuration that is we are able to collect k unit of each of these characters so why not try every possible combinations of lnr that should be the very first approach so basically what we will say okay i will try every possible combination of lnr so we'll we will let's say we'll start with uh, okay let's just erase this so what we are saying is we will start with this l so we'll say okay up, uh, nothing from left is taken now tell me how much up till like up till how much i will take so that my condition will be satisfied right so that's what r will denote so what you can do you can try every possible l right starting from 0 to n so what does it mean l equal to 0 mean you are not taking anything from the left right left is intact you are taking something from the right l equals to 1 what does it mean l equals to 1 mean you are taking one step from the left right so we are iterating over all the l's right and then for each of these l we are iterating over r's as well right and we are saying we are trying to find out how many a how many b and how many c we have collected so we have collected a total of these many a's right every number of a's from 0 to l number of a's from r to n similarly number of b's from 0 to l number of b's from r to n and so on and so forth so after we calculated this number of a's number of b's number of c we'll just see if it is greater than equals to k or not if all of them are greater than equals to k then we will say okay this configuration of l and r is a valid configuration and just we'll just take uh, result equals to minimum of result comma l plus r right like basically number of characters that we have taken from here and number of characters we have taken from here right so that's what we will do now what will be the time complexity so uh, this loop like is order n right we are iterating over every element similarly in worst case this can also go to order n right now after this uh, what about this this i uh, be computing number of a's from 0 to l computing number of b's from 0 to l and so on so this you can do in order n as well but like this entire part you can do in order n as well right but you can optimize it very easily by using prefix sum right so currently complexity is order n cube but from n cube you can directly go to n square by removing this n altogether by just simply replacing this part with a prefix sum so what you can do you can just maintain a uh, prefix or suffix sum whatever you want and uh, this will do something like this like you will just maintain number of like here i maintain suffix sum but you can maintain prefix sum as well so with this you are able you can you can you can answer this kind of queries very efficiently like how many a's are there in a range you can answer this this kind of queries very efficiently so just to uh, see you, like how many of them are there in 0 to l so basically what you are saying is how many of them are there in 0 to l right so what we can simply do we can say okay how many of them are there here from n to l right n to 0 and then how many of them are there in this part so then we can just subtract these two like this part and this part and finally we get how many of them are there in this particular area right so that's what like we will do and we can just uh, maintain this prefix sum and compute these values in order one time so hence the complexity would be order n square but even n square is not sufficient if you look at the constraint n is 10 to the power 5 so n square will also not pass so now what so we need to remove uh, one of these n right so we can remove any one of them but let's just think about it in a different way so instead of saying i will try every possible r first thing let's say you get like you found out that okay everything is greater than k at let's say some at say let's say here like when the r when r was here you found out that every okay, everything is satisfied like everything is greater than equals to k now does it make sense to try this r or this r right it isn't right because once you found out that okay this is the first r so basically this r and this r all those r are not satisfied right because if they are satisfied you will not you don't need to go further because if you go further you will be adding on more elements but you, what you want is you want minimum number of steps right so once as soon as you encounter one r 
which satisfies all these requirements you will not be going forward right so this this is similar to searching for the value of r instead of iterating over r we can say okay we are searching for r we will try like okay there are two loops right we can't avoid one of like we can't avoid this at least right because we have to iterate over like we have to fix one of these variable so that we can find out other variable right this is the standard technique that we follow in case of any arithmetic problem if you have two variables we'll try to fix the value of one and then see uh, what are the possible values of the other variable right so in this case we are fixing l so what we are saying is okay i know i have taken this all completely now find me the first r which can satisfy which can help me satisfy the condition right so instead of this algorithm what we will be doing we will be having something like this we'll say okay now i will iterate over l that's fine but instead of iterating over uh, r as well i will try to find r so what we, what i will do i will i know i want k number of a's right so i already have this many number of a's so i will just subtract these two and i will get how many number of a's i require more similarly b and c now i will search for r in the range n to 0 like in the backward range right so i will search for first r which help me satisfy all these three criteria right i will try to find first r which help me satisfy all these three criteria and that r will be my uh the final r for this particular l right so i will do the same thing for all the l and finally because i have done for all the l i have exhausted all the cases like i have literally tried out every possible case and get the answer for every possible case and take the minimum out of those answers right so hope this point is clear now what we are doing so this part is order n right now this searching part was something which we were doing previously in order n like we are just trying out every possible r so we will start from okay so we will just we will just start from the end right and we will say okay i will try this r if it is okay then uh, if it is okay then i am done this is the this is my answer else i will try this r if it is okay then this is my answer then if it is not i will try this r and so on and so forth right so basically we are doing a linear search over the r right now linear search is taking us order n time so what is the alternative you can try to think of applying binary search here like that's the first thing that should come to your mind after you do after you see a linear search as we are doing linear search for r we can see if we can do binary search for r again this technique might not be true in other problems so it is very important to come up with linear search approach first because if you directly go with binary search then there can be problems where binary search is not applicable and you will be stuck there so it is very important to come up with linear search approach first And then go for binary search instead of directly going to binary search even if you know that binary search is applicable right so here let's see if binary search is applicable or not so i have a complete video on binary search i will uh, link them in the video description uh, as as well in the uh, info bar at the top uh, so just to uh, like refresh our memory so we have some uh, some play, like some samples or some candidates and we want to find the right one so what binary search when binary search is applicable binary search is applicable when at a point at a point we are able to deterministically say notice the word deterministically we are able to deterministically say whether to go left or to go right if we are able to say this deterministically based on some function at this particular place then we can say binary search is applicable here so what like what is the function here the function here is whether r is possible or not so at at let's say at position i or at position i whether this position i is a good value for r or not that is our condition now let's say this is true like this r is a good value this position i is a good value for r right so what does it mean it means that if you take let's say this is i so what does it mean it means that if you take everything uh, if you take everything up till i 
then you will be having at least required num required a number of a's required b number of b's and required c number of c's right so if it is true then will it make sense to search in the left at all the answer is no because basically what we are saying is we already know that this is a good value for r right so if this is a good value for r why to increase i in the left it doesn't make sense because if you increase i it will remain good you already found this number of a the number of required number of a's and required number of b and required number of c so if you expand this condition will still be true but you will you want the minimum possible i so this condition this all condition would be true as well so there is no need to search here instead we can say i can skip searching in the left and only search in the right right so basically we are we have skipped or we are able to say that we can skip the entire left half completely right similarly if it is false then what exactly does it mean it means that up till here i have taken everything and even then i am not able to make i am not able to collect this much a this much b or this much c like one of them or all of them or some of them are still left right so you want more elements so because you want more elements it doesn't make sense to decrease i right to make i this or this because at this place at this place if you want more elements at this place definitely you want more elements right so that's why it doesn't make sense in that case to search in the left half in the right half instead we'll search only in the right uh, left half so basically based on a function we are deterministically able to say whether to search left or right and hence binary search is applicable so this search for r this search for r we will replace this search for r with a binary search and hence this order n would become order log n right and the overall complexity would then become n log n which will pass the given time and space complexity okay so hope this makes sense so let's look at the code very quickly so again i would encourage you to code it yourself because um, you will be able to understand the prefix sum approach as well and uh, how to apply binary search here as well because this is a very good problem to practice binary search by yourself so i would encourage you to pause and implement it yourself first okay um, let's look at the code the so code is simple like as we discussed we we calculate the prefix sum so in this i showed suffix sum just to uh, like just that because that's how i had implemented during the contest but i implemented it after the contest so that there i used prefix sum uh, so this is the prefix sum that we were talking about to fast forward the calculations like this uh, number of a's from 0 to l number of b's from 0 to l and so on right so once you have prefix sum we these are the base condition that we are checking so basically if k is 0 it means we don't want anything if we don't want anything there is no need to perform any step at all so just return 0 right but and second is if total number of a's total number of b's and total number of c's in the given string is not k so given string doesn't have the required number of a required number of b and required number of c so in that case we will we will have to return minus 1 so this is case like this here we don't have 1b 1c or 1a right so that's why we return minus 1 otherwise we are iterating over l right so we can just put equals to l as well but uh, that's fine because that will be covered in the right half if you think about it so basically we are iterating over all the l's l equals to 0 means we are not taking any thing from the left l equals to 1 means we are taking one element from the left and so on right so after after this i found out the number of required elements for each of these characters right so required element is k minus this right and once we found out the required number of character we will search for r in the range l plus 1 to n plus 1 so why n plus 1 up till n up if you if you put n it means you are taking this c right but it may happen that you will not take anything from the left from the right so that's why n plus 1 n plus 1 is dummy character that i have taken so we will search in the range l plus 1 to n plus 1 and uh, this n plus 1 is just this the n like number of elements mm, so once we get this minimum r we will just uh, uh, find out how many elements we took completely right we took this much elements 
and we'll just minim like find the minimum with result. So what search of R looks like? Search of R just a binary search. We just see uh, while L less than R, if we found the minimum, uh, we found the middle element. We'll check if everything up till middle element is good or not. So how to check that? So we want to check whether everything up till here is good or not. So how to check? Just find out the number of A's, number of B's, and number of C's up till here, like in this particular range, and see if they are uh, enough to match these requirements, right? So that's what we are doing. We are checking number of A's, number of B's, and number of C's in this range, and seeing if it is matching the requirement or not. So if it is less than the required characters, we are saying that this M, this position of M is not possible. So if it is not possible, we will skip the right half and just search in the left half, right? So that's what we are doing. We, if it is not possible, we will search in the left half. So R is M. And if it is possible, we search in the right half, right? So this loop will end in log n operation because every time we are uh, halving the array by, we, we are basically um, dividing the array into half. So this will complete in order log n. So this entire search R is order log n. And we uh, we have this uh, we are calling this search R n number of times. So the entire complexity is n log n, right? So hope this makes sense. If you have any doubts in this problem, please post them in the comment section below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you.